What's up everybody? Welcome back to Pens and Tea. My name is Carrie and today we're going to start a new top five series. I'm going to go from uh, top five beginner fountain pens um, focusing on price. So $30 or less. That is today's video. Then I'm going to have sort of like a mid-range uh, fountain pen where it's going to be from about 75 to 200 dollars then i'm gonna step it up again with another video where i'm gonna go like to mid high range so from about 200 dollars to 500 dollars then because that's not enough i'm gonna do another video where i go high-end pens which is 500 dollars and up uh, and when i say and up i don't mean like you know, a mortgage payment or more. Um, I mean within $500 and maybe $1,500. And then, I'm starting to feel like Ashton Kutcher in uh, Dude, Where's My Car? And then, uh, and then <laughs> I'm gonna do one last video where it's another top five, but this time, oh, we are not going with any sanity. We're gonna be doing a top five absurd fountain pen which leave a comment down below if you know which one costs 1.5 million dollars yeah so without any further ado let's get cracking on a 30 dollar or less fountain pen list this uh is a great list it's generally considered a beginner list uh people who don't want to spend too much to get into the hobby um but you know, I've been in this for years and years. Many people have been in it for like 30 plus years and they still have these pens because they're great pens. Uh, so the top two, if you've been in the fountain pen game for some time now, uh, you probably know what the top two are that are uh, widely debated. <laughs> So I haven't ordered these five in ranking of what's the best to what's the least. It's just five pens that are $30 or less that I consider great purchases uh, for beginner uh, fountain pen users. So one of those two that everyone always talks about is the Lamy Safari. However you want to pronounce it, this is a great pen. So. Benefits to this pen, high level. Uh, all of these pens I've done reviews of, so you can check them out in my channel if you want further details. But benefits to this pen is it is lightweight because it's completely plastic. Um, for this pen, it does have a uh, ink window here so that you'll be able to see the level of ink that you have um, left in your cartridge and or converter. Um, steel nib uh what's great about the lamy is that you know should you purchase one you get used to it you kind of dig it and you want to experiment a little bit more you can buy individual nibs that just pop right off um instead of having to buy completely new pens just to test out you know what kind of nib sizes you may or may not like um downside to these ones um i have heard some people say that they're, they crack because they are plastic um, and sometimes when you screw on, like when you have the converter in here, I don't have it, but sometimes when you screw the, the body of the pen on, it can catch, um, and it can potentially break. Um, but probably the most infamous issue with the Lamy Safari, it's the reason why people either love it or hate it, is because of the triangle grip. Uh, it does not bother me, um, you know, but it does really bother some people people. I like this pen. I don't use it a lot. I do find it a little bit dry, um, but that is a complete personal preference. Um, I like my fountain pens to write like fire hoses, so not everybody is going to find this pen on the drier side. Um, but that is just me. The reason why I've kept this one around is just because this is the dark lilac version and it's so pretty. <laughs> It is so, so pretty. And this pen is at the top of the price point list at $30. Um, you can, all of the prices I'm gonna match, or list rather, um, are like standard retail prices. Um, if you shop around, you look for some deals, some sales, all this kind of good stuff, um, you could potentially find it for much less, but for the sake of ease, um, I'm just gonna give general, regular retail pricing. So 30 smacks. Then we have the next 
debated, uh, which is the Pilot Metropolitan. That's going to come in at $24 uh, with a slight asterisk. Sometimes that price will go up or down depending on if any special models come out. Uh, but the benefit of both the Lamy Safari uh, and the Pilot Metropolitan is they do have like special editions that come out. Lamy has been a little bit quicker on that than um, Pilot Metropolitan has in the last few years. But you got loads and loads and loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of choices as far as design goes. Um, so that's really great. The Pilot Metro, um, what I like about that pen, and that happened to be my first pen, um, is I like the fact that it's an all metal pen. Um, the grip section is plastic, but other than that, it's pretty much all metal. Um, it's got a very nice weight to it, um, much nicer in my opinion than the Lamy Safari. Um, that was a little too light for me. Uh, I like a pen with a little bit more weight typically. Um, so that's really nice. I love the way that Pilot nibs write. Um, they're very smooth, much smoother than any of my Lamy experiences. Um, so I quite enjoy that. And it does tend to be a little bit wetter than the Lamy's do as well. Uh, again, in my opinion. Uh, the downside to the Metropolitan uh, is that the converter it comes with is a squeeze bladder, uh, which some people have no issue with. Uh, it's really, really easy to clean, but the problem with it is that you have no idea what your ink level is. So for beginners, that can kind of be a problem because you may not be used to, um, you know, how much you can generally write <coughs> using just the Pilot Con 20 that it comes with. So. That's definitely a downside and you can't change the nibs like you can on the Lamy Safari. Um, so there's definitely some downsides to that, um, but they're still amazing pens. I would recommend them to anyone. Um, and those are kind of like the two that are most discussed within the fountain pen community as being the beginner. Like which one should you do? Like battle it out. Um, I don't really think you should battle. I think you should go off what you want. Um, and if you've got the funds, get both. <laughs> Um, another pen that I really, really recommend, and this one actually I had no idea about until about a year ago, and it changed the game, and that is the Diplomat Magnum. Uh, I specifically had the soft touch version, um, which essentially just means that the body is a little bit smoother, um, and that nib by far is the smoothest nib I have ever used when it comes to uh, steel nibs. It has a great amount of bounce to it, which typically is not something that you're gonna get with steel nibs. Any other pen, the other four that I'm gonna be listing, so the Lamy, the Pilot, and the two other that I'm gonna be listing after this, stiff nibs. You're not gonna get any kind of like flex or um, you know bounce or, or any line variation out of those. The Diplomat Magnum, you will, and it is beautiful. Um, it looks very similar to the Lamy Safari. It has a lot of the same pros, uh, but you can't change the nib either. Um, that is one that is exclusive to the Lamy Safari uh, over anything else in this list. Um, the Magnum comes in at $21. Now, again, that's a ex like little asterisk. Um, you can get ones that are a little bit more than that depending on the style um, and the finish that you want, um, but it all stays pretty much below $30, uh, with the exception of one, I think, and that's a Goulet exclusive, if I'm thinking correctly. Um, but I quite, quite, quite like it. I've recommended it to everyone that I can possibly think of now that uh, I've discovered it. And honestly, I wish that I had discovered that before um, I got into this hobby because that would have been, I think, my ideal number one pen to start with um, because it just gives you the best experience um, for basically no money, which is great. <laughs> um, the other ones are very cheap, very cheap. So, so far we've had $30, $24, $21. Now we're going down to $4.50. So the Lamy Safari, Pilot Metro, um, Diplomat Magnum, they're all pens that, you know, you're spending at least 20 bucks on. So you're kind of putting an investment in, depending on, you know, how much money you got. <laughs> But these guys, uh, Platinum Preppies, you really don't have to put much investment into them. $4.50, um, they're, they're very basic. Uh, you can get them with um, cartridges. You can, you know, if you want to like go later in life after you've figured out if you like fountain pens or not, you can eyedropper fill these. I won't get into what that means, but essentially you're just filling the body of ink. 
body pen with ink. Um, they're really, really, really easy to clean. Most of them are demonstrator, so you'll have no problem viewing your ink. Uh, demonstrator just means that it's completely see-through, um, so you'll be able to see that no problem. They write fascinatingly well for being very cheap pens. Um, because they're very cheap pens, you can get a bunch of them, which means you can fill up a whole bunch of them with ink um, and just do whatever you want. You can get like four for the price of one if you want. You know, four filled, take them wherever you want to go. They can break. If you drop them on tile or things like that, I have heard people say that they've cracked. Um, I haven't experienced that myself, but it is a possibility. Uh, but again, they're super, super cheap. So is it really that much of a harm in replacing it? Who knows? Uh, you can get different nib sizes. They're not dramatically different. Um, so a medium is like 0.5 uh, millimeters thick kind of thing, and then a fine, you can get a 0.3. Um, so the, the nib sizes, you can get a little bit uh, of a difference, basically between a fine and a medium nib um, for really, really cheap. So I really like these. I keep a whole bunch in my arsenal. Um, I have a couple more somewhere, but I can't find them right now. Um, I like to use these for inks that I'm not confident putting in my very expensive pens. So anything with shimmer or, or um, you know, harsh properties, things like that. That's what I use these for. Um, they're great pens. They're relatively wet writers. Um, and yeah, I just, I recommend them to anyone. They're stellar. And then, and then we come to the cheapest pen, which is $3.30, the Pilot Varsity. These are fantastic pens. Uh, again, I've done reviews of all of these, actually, except for the, the Preppy. I should do a separate review of these, but I have done one of these. It was done a long time ago, but I still stand by basically everything that I said. These pens are $3.30 if you buy them individually, or you can buy a pack of seven like I did, uh, and it still comes on under the $30. It's $21.25. So these are very, very similar to the Platinum Preppy. The main difference is that the Pilot Varsities come pre-filled. So they're already loaded with ink, and you don't have to use uh, any additional uh, bottles of ink or cartridges or anything like that. The reason why I really like these is because for people who are just getting into fountain pens, getting into paper and ink and how to fill it, different filling mechanisms. Uh, do you have to have a syringe? Do you have to have a, an eyedropper? Do you have to have a, a bulb syringe? Do you have to have uh, a little vial? Do you have, should you get samples? Should you get bottles? What if you do if the bottle, if you open it up and you dip it in and then you're going to contaminate the bottle? There's so much to think about. <laughs> this takes all of that away. All of it. It's so much like a traditional pen. You just open it up, you write, you close it up, you're done. I've had these for years. I got them in the first year I used fountain pens, and I wanna say that was like, oh, six years ago? Something like that. I don't know exactly, but about six-ish years ago. And these are amazing. I just, oh my gosh, I love them. And like, yeah. I just, I love these. They write so well. They're, again, they're pretty wet. They're pre-filled. You don't have to worry about it. There is an ink window, so you can watch that. Um, you, if you're done, you just run out of ink. You can toss it and get a new one. Or there are some hacks that you can refill these. Now, again, that's getting pretty invested into a you know $3.30 pen. But if you're uh, really wanting to, you can keep them. And you can get a wide variety of colors. So I got red, pink, blue, purple, light blue, teal, and black. So you can get a wide variety of choice for $3.30. Woo! All right. So that is 15 minutes of basically nonstop rambling from me. Um, those are the five that I have been recommending for quite some time. Most probably still recommend for the rest of the times. Um, but what about you? What would you recommend as your top five or just the five that you consider to be the, you know, the best fountain pen to start off with. There are other brands that I didn't even talk about. Like you get into Jinhao or you can get into any of these things. 
where you can get like a dollar pen or something like that. Um, so I'm very interested to see what you guys would think. Those are my top five. Let me know if you've used them. Let me know what you think. Um, hit that like and subscribe button because I will be back very shortly with my next video in the series that I talked about before, my mid-range pens. Um, and guys, yeah, thank you for watching. Thank you for hanging out with me for 15 minutes and listening to me go on and on. Guys, I'll see you next time. Bye.